Hi, David. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of From the Bottom Up. David is up there in um, Angel's Landing at the monastery because he's participating in the mystery school. And I was up there yesterday, so he's on Zoom, and I'm, I'm down here in Camas. Beautiful. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well... Actually, maybe I'd like to start out with a minute meditation so our whole television crew here and everybody can just catch up and we can all just be in that space together. Okay. Well, the theme of my show today is this line that I keep hearing all week. And it's from The Course in Miracles. It took me a while to find it. But it says, In honesty, is it not harder for you to say, I love, than I hate? And those of you that were on my show last week, you probably saw that this pattern came up for me where I just felt very locked up and was wondering if I was supposed to say certain thoughts and yeah, just uh, all this love came through David and I just, again, it just like cracked me open and I just, I felt so open and, and it was like a layer just popped through and strangely enough, actually today before Andy and Nicholas's show, I was watch, about ready to watch and Andy pulled me out and he just had that same experience and I really got to see that it was because the Spirit had a very profound message to share through him, profound in the sense that it was, it was going to crack him open and he was scared to say it and didn't know how. And I think he just wanted and needed permission. And I said, it is a radical topic for live tea, but we don't have to put it out on YouTube and Facebook after. So you just, you just do what you need to do. This isn't a real show. And I could just feel when I was in the studio audience almost as backup and at one point he looked over at me like I look over at David like is it okay you know and I was like go for it go for it <laughs> because it isn't a show it's just about cracking open and I can just see that those the reason those even attack thoughts which are really just conflicting thoughts are there in the mind is because it's just trying to prevent us from this love underneath and from the fear of redemption section is where that is. He say, you, you don't mind the hatred. You don't even mind your attack thoughts as long as you don't get in touch with the love. And I'm sorry to say, but we have to, we have to go through and be transparent with that stuff as terrible and as, as terrifying and scary as it is. But I've just been having this week where ever since then, I'm getting these glimpses of like, this fear will come up. Even yesterday in mystery school, I, I introduced myself as, hi, I'm Jason, and fear is, <laughs> fear is okay. And luckily enough, because I think, I don't know, maybe half the participants, David might even be able to comment more, had more fear coming up this morning, right? Like, yeah. like it's... Yeah, it's tremendous. Tremendous fear of love. And, you know, it's actually, this is a real good topic because... Um, you know, uh, that idea that, in all honesty, Jesus says it's more difficult or easy to say, um, I hate you than I love you. And and on the surface, you know, when people read that, and of course, they're like, are you kidding me? But let's, let's go into that a little deeper, because there's some lot of stuff underneath that. Uh, you know, there's, we love it when we hear I love you in a love song. 
uh, I, I remember that uh, Paul McCartney song, where, I love you. You know, he just started singing I love you over and over and over. It's called like crazy love songs, you know. He, But we love to hear it and it stirs us in our heart and we feel all this warm, gushy feeling coming. And yet all of us have been conditioned a bit to be careful with our words, you know, uh, like they would say, if you're if you see somebody that you're drawn to or attracted to, you know, get to know them a bit, date them a bit, and then be careful uh, during the dating process because if you let those three words slip out of your mouth, uh, you better be able to back it up. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you better be serious. Okay. If I if I say those words, I love you, in that kind of a context, I, it better be serious. Why? It better be sincere. You better mean them, and you better back it up. Well, what does that mean? Uh, getting married, committing for lifetime, uh, committing till death do you part. You know, you can see if there's a big package of responsibilities, obligations, duties for the rest of your life until you die that people might have a, a little reservation about saying I love you in that context. Also, nobody tells us to say that to strangers on the street. They would say, that's weird. If you would see somebody and, that you don't know and say I love you, they would say that's inappropriate. That's, that's, that's almost like it's harassment. It's harassment to say I love you to somebody on the street. It's a harassment to say it to a post postal delivery. You know, you can guys if just deliver in the mail, let him do his job. Don't tell him you love him. You know, that it's crazy. But I, I think underneath the fear of saying I love you and the fear of really is the fear of love itself and the fear that that it's not that there are real obligations and duties that follow from those three letters. It's actually that there's such a belief in sacrifice, like to say, I love you. The ego says, be careful, because if you say those words, it's going to cost you something. Mm. It'll cost you your personal freedom. Mm. That's going to cost you a life of adventure. It's going to mm. cost you all the wonderful choices you could make and all the things you could do mm. in your life. And if you throw those three words out, mm. well, that's like the, the ball and chain they sometimes say about marriage. Marriage is a ball and chain. And, and they'll say, you know, it's, it requires sacrifice. All relationships we've been told require enormous sacrifice, enormous self-sacrifice. And so it's only this belief in sacrifice, which is deeply buried in the unconscious mind, that brings up this ambiguity around, I love you. And I have to say that when I went through this awakening experience with The Course in Miracles, I couldn't say it enough. In fact, I even put it on my answering machine on my phone. If people, I go, hi, I'm not available to take your call right now, but if you leave a message, I'll get back to you. I love you. And people are going, oh, God, that's gone way too far. You don't put... Uh, I love you on your answering machine of all places. It's ridiculous, people. I said, no, I, that's just one tip of the iceberg. I want to say it to everything and everyone. And and so now we're talking about authentic spiritual awakening is, is getting underneath that belief of sacrifice and saying, I'm going to let go of sacrifice. I, I love you doesn't cost anything at all. Mm. I love you is a gift from God mm. that is meant to be freely shared with everything mm. and everyone, without mm. exception. Mm. And now we're getting to the truth of the matter. Mm. <laughs> That's beautiful, David. It's even, it's necessary too, because it's like if you're not doing one, you're doing the other. And and I think in some ways that's what inspired me for this show, because I could feel when you talked about, if you say I love you, especially within a deep, like intimate relationship, that's where the you can really, it might even be easier to say it to a stranger than where it's given and I've experienced that with relationships and one in particular with Emily because I was watching as as the relationship became apparent that it was maximized it was all of a sudden you know like Emily and I went to 
summit, um, Daniel's summit, not last weekend, but the weekend before, because she had this kind of firmness in her mind, like, I need to know where are we at. And so I said, okay, well, let's, let's meet. Today is the day. So we went to Summit Lodge, and when we, we spent about half an hour, an hour talking, and something wasn't clear until finally both of us felt it was maximized. And as soon as we said that, there was no relationship box whatsoever, and she just looked so beautiful to me. She just, she lit up. In, in such ways, we, we had a three-hour conversation like we've never had before, and I'm still kind of hoping she's going to come on the show at some point, but she's running a project in mystery school right now, so she can't, like, we don't know what she's going to do. But it was just this really wonderful experience, and I, I did have this feeling like, wow, have I always thought she was holding me in a box, and that's why we couldn't be deeper, and and yet I saw, wow, I've been somehow holding her in a box. And when I went to Jesus after, later I said, well, who was holding who in a box? He just, I just kept hearing him say both. It's, it's beyond the who and who. It's like there's just a box there. And this, this maximization is meant to bring more love in. And, you know, she gave me the rings back and I broke down crying. And it was just, I don't know, it was so much love. I was like, I'll marry you again right now. You know, it was so so beautiful and powerful and I want that experience alive and I want, that's why I wanted to do this show. I just wanted to share how much I love her and loved her and just, you know, she helped me like let go of control and, you know, there's something in my mind that even sleeping at night I can't, uh, I don't, or in the past I wasn't able to just rest as deeply unless somebody was there for some reason. It's so crazy because I didn't have a girlfriend until I was like 27 but whatever, it was like, it just helped me rest and just knowing that there was somebody stable just allowed me to keep going deeper and yeah I probably could just talk half an hour but those are my <laughs> <laughs> all that love and gratitude yeah. it reminds me too uh, when Kirsten first came across to the United States from New Zealand uh, she would occasionally talk about this boyfriend she had and that boyfriend she was like talking about a lot of times her exes her her ex-boyfriends and so on and so forth and even past life regressions, how she would always reach a certain point in, in her worldly life, even through past life regressions, where as soon as it was her true love was had found her and she found her true love, there'd be a death or it'd be parted by extreme circumstances. And it was this kind of heartbreaking uh, story of, of uh, love, love that never really came to a full fruition. And uh, I remember at one point, I was saying, well, that's just, that's pretty obvious that uh, you have never known what love is. And just the look on her face, she just gave me a look like, how dare you say those words? After she was giving me the comment, I said, you've never known what love is. And, and it reminds me, too, of, of what goes for romantic love in this world is it is such a trap. It's like, that's why Jesus spends nine chapters uh, out of 31, nine chapters. There's no other topic in the course that gets nine chapters, uh, or maybe it's seven. Somebody recently, I, I always say nine, but it, maybe it's seven. Whatever, it's a lot of chapters. And the funny thing is, is that it so much involves uh, a personal definition of love. It really isn't agape love. It isn't universal love. It, it has no resemblance whatsoever. There's warm, gushy feelings at times, but they don't last. You know, they come and go. That's why all the anniversaries are so important to celebrate, all the, the special days. Why is Valentine's Day such a, a special day? Is because it's, it's basically celebrating a very personal kind of love, which if you get into the workbook of A Course in Miracles, he says there is no love but God's love. In other words, those are facsimiles. Those are fantasies. Those are not the real thing. They are not constant. They are not eternal. And, uh, and they aren't even a glimmering of the faintest experience of actual divine love. And so... I remember one time when I, early on, when back in the 2000s, when I went down to uh, Columbia, it was probably around 2005, and I was just meeting people left and right, going to Concurso de Milagros groups here and there, all over Cali, Colombia, holding gatherings almost every day, whisking around in cars, a swirl of Colombians that I'd never met, and we were sharing all this joy and happiness and glee, 
And then one day um, I was told uh, a, a woman interviewed me for a TV show. And uh, she said, actually, uh, they were going to do makeup on me and everything. He said, no, don't, don't even bother with him. And then the next day, she wanted to go spend more time with me. So we went up with this pilot and we flew flew over the mountains and we flew to the ocean. And I didn't know it, but it was the Colombian equivalent of Valentine's Day. Okay. Now, the Colombian equivalent of Valentine's Day is you go and you share love with everyone you meet the entire day. No, it's not some romantic dinner at some restaurant where it's just two people. No, it doesn't involve rings or re re redoing vows or saying I love yous and this and this. And so I was like, I had no clue about the Colombian version of Valentine's Day. And so they said, no, we just take a bag of candy, the pilot and this uh, TV news broadcaster and myself, three of us who didn't even know each other, up flying around, and we landed at a military base, and we walked right in. All these generals were having this big meeting, and we had our bags of candy, and the generals at first were shocked that we were, we opened the door, we went right into their confidential meeting, private meeting, and then they smiled because they saw us with the candy, and they knew in their culture this was the day when you love everybody. So they all smiled and laughed, and we gave them candy, and we hugged these generals, and we went down on the beach, and we, we were giving it to children, mothers, fathers, all over the beach. We were passing out candy. It's almost like the reverse of Halloween, trick or treat. We were, we were giving the candy out to everybody with no distinction. There was no distinction whatsoever. We weren't betrothed to the people. We were like brothers and sisters in, in the joy of the living moment. And that's the love of Christ. It's not specific. If you try mm. to tie it down to one person, mm. it's like taking a little sewing thimble and holding up that little thimble mm. to ask God, please fill my little thimble here. Mm. It's it's right on your th finger. Mm. It's so tiny. Yeah. Please fill my cup. Yeah. And Jesus is like, listen, the Niagara Falls are a little bit better uh, estimation of my love mm. it's huge gallons and gallons and gallons tons mm. of water pouring mm. out is is a, mm. a natural expression of the love of god mm. so we just had it all wrong we've had it all upside down and now you know even it's so beautiful hearing about you and emily in those three hours because all the things that were part of that construct of what even seemed to be a marriage that can be very time-based, very linear-based, and, and then you've got to almost live up to something, like you're expected to love in a certain way, or you know, you're expected to do things, and you're mm -hmm. expected to show that love in certain ways, and, and underneath all those expectations, I'll guarantee you, is the belief in sacrifice. There's mm. still the belief in sacrifice mm. from the ego. Mm. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, I, it was like just a temporary suspension of the box, and now I, I see her, and I don't really have like a married or not married. I don't feel any different. I just want that. I actually just want that three hours just to keep expanding. And then yeah. you were there when one of the participants of the mystery school who watches my show showed up and said, "It's like wow, you gave this beautiful talk with Kirsten at Strawberry Fields of how when you got." divorced and let go, you just had all of this expansion of love, and then I find out a week later you're doing that with with Emily, and he said, and now you have a spark for somebody else, and it was like when he said that, though, I just had this feeling like it's not really that at all, it was never about somebody else, it's more like what you're saying, it was just, that was just a kind of an inroads to let me know that something was maximized over here, but it's actually an inroads to this much bigger love that isn't interpersonal and I part of what I realized last week too when I was having those thoughts with you is that if part of my mind was getting into a box so quickly again and I feel like I can't sacrifice my connection for example with you which is very pure and loving and has no nothing but awakening as our purpose I can't sacrifice that and, and God's love for any interpersonal relationships. I feel like somehow I'm even more fired up. <laughs> and, yeah. 
But yeah, you know, Suzanne and Dan just did that beautiful show, uh, Life on Purpose, and they had the little book, Purpose is the Only Choice, and and actually, you know, they did touch on some really good points there. One of them is that all of the choices of this world are the same because they're all illusions. The ego doesn't believe that. It says, no, someone that you choose to spend the rest of your linear life with is a lot different than some stranger that you've never met that lives in Ethiopia or somebody that you've met in passing and have a casual acquaintance with. You know, we, we have to say that the ego is all about hierarchies and the Course in Miracles is all about uh, the very first principle, basically, that there's no order of difficulty in miracles. And the reason there, I'll give you a, a hint why there's no order of difficulty in miracles is because there is no hierarchy of illusions. That that if you would meet somebody and, and have a glance at them and have a look in your eye and a connection, it's no different than a 50 or 60 year marriage. There's no difference whatsoever. In fact, the whole point is undoing this belief in hierarchy of illusions. And so when you come down to, um, to love and to forgiveness, opening to love, then people would say, I, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. In fact, that doesn't seem practical. And if what you're saying is true, then the whole world must be false. And I'm like, yeah, precisely, you're getting there. The whole world is false. If God didn't create it, it's all part of a mirage, a hallucination that was made up by the ego to defend against divine love, to defend against eternity. And what I see, too, is that, that well, what's, practically speaking, then, what's the alternative? And it's function. Purpose and function are identical. So purpose is the only choice should also, also read function is the only choice. Well, here we are in a mystery school where people are dedicating like 30 days out of their entire life to come together and dismantle the ego, to unwind from falsity and deception and come to a bursting love, joy experience. They're all here. And they're, you're there right in the studio doing your show. And, and I saw Emily this morning, you know, she's glowing, beaming, had the roving microphone going around. She's finding out more than ever that, that my Course in Miracles workbook lesson, my happiness and my function are one. Did you hear that? My happiness and my function are one. It doesn't say my happiness and pleasing my partner are one. It doesn't say my happiness and having a partner are one. It doesn't say that. My happiness and having a soulmate are one. No, it doesn't say that. It says my happiness and my function are one. Now, what does that mean? That function has to serve the whole. It has to serve the whole universe. It has to be, you, have, you better get a good case of Mother Teresa-itis is what you need. You need some Gandhi-itis going on there, if you, you believe in sickness. You need, to become, you need to become a little more like Mandela, a, a little more universal. How about some Jesus-itis? Let's catch some Jesus-itis going on here, because this idea of little bitty thimbles and little relationships and trying to <coughs> find divine love through bodies, it ain't going nowhere. It has never worked. That's mm. why Shakespeare was able to write all those plays. Because, because people have tried for centuries to find the beautiful, eternal, forever love. We write love songs. We always do generations of love songs. Still, nobody's touching the, 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 the not faintly touching it. So now, that's why we say get into service, get into joy, get into serving deeper and deeper and deeper and even the prayer at the beginning of the book i am here only to be truly helpful what does those two words together mean truly helpful if if we really knew what truly helpful was we wouldn't even be experiencing this world there would be no world to to perceive if if the truly helpful were known so that's why it's like down the rabbit hole that that uh, Suzanne was talking about this morning, you have to, you have to say whatever I believed, whatever my experience of love has been. I'm grateful for the glimmers. Mm. I'm grateful for those little glittery moments. But I have to be willing to go for much more, much, much more. Mm. Function. That's yeah. what I would tell people. Yeah. Whatever your function, your next calling. 
That's what I'm feeling like because I'm, some of you may or may not know, but I, I'm so full on. I'm even between mystery school up there, I go full on, I come down here and it's shows and one-on-ones and I feel like the mind energy is so high that I even saw something this morning or last night that, because this, sometimes this thought will come up like I'm not loved or supported. It, like, for example, I, up at the monastery I had a room, but once Emily needed her space, <laughs> then I had no room and it was like nobody knew where and I was like, was this a sign I'm not supposed to go up there or whatever, but in the end, I'm actually staying in the loft of Kirsten's cabin, which is kind of cool. And she made me a nice tea in the morning, and we talk before she goes to her room, and I go up to lab. And it's just like just another really nice, loving symbol. And I, and then I had this experience this morning when I don't know what it was, but I just felt like like whatever you have, whatever you perceive as lacking is what you failed to give. It's like. Somehow there's just a deeper call for me to see that it's not... Because when people would call me from up there, you don't understand, it's busy up here. I'm like, you don't understand, it's busy down here. It's I, <laughs> There's something missing, you know? And I was like, what is it? And I just had this experience that people don't need support. Nobody needs support. Support is an attitude in my mind that if I just get in that space, I don't even have to personally figure out what's needed for them or me. Jesus is doing all that. That's just a control and responsibility error. And I'm happy. And, and that's back to it's easier to say I love you than I hate. It's easier to, sorry, it's easier to pick out a problem than just come to the place and be happy. And it's like another version of that. And I'm just, yeah, I'm kind of excited about that realization this morning too. Yeah. I think it's, it's beautiful if you can just be open to understand some context. Like, for example, you know, a lot of people who watch the show know that, that obviously to make a commitment, a marriage <laughs> commitment is a, is a major commitment in the world. Any culture you pick, you know, you're going to find this marriage commitment, marriage vow is no uh, light thing, you know. And of course, there's a lot of time underneath that. There's a lot of beliefs tied in, and and that's part of it. But also, there there is some awareness that there's something valuable about, like a marriage vow. There's something valuable. There's something that the angels and God are smiling about. It's because you're really committing to mind training to to mind your own mind, to accept a correction within your mind and then for the whole universe, and to not project your uh, disconnection with God onto a partner. So that's what's valuable about a marriage vow. And then in the context of that, you start to realize that every every teaching learning opportunity is maximal in the sense that, that whoever's to meet shall meet Nothing is by accident. Nothing is at random. Okay, that's all good stuff. And you start to realize you have an assignment there. And yet, the assignment is, is in the mind to come to that state of mind that you were just describing, where you, where you realize that Jesus is in charge of everything. I mean, literally, he was the first one to accept the atonement and to escape from time and space. And somehow, human beings think that they've got personal responsibility. And he's like, well... Actually, just join your mind with my mind. Let my mind be the same mind that is Christ Jesus. That's right from the Bible. It's been there for 2,000 years, telling them it's just join your mind with the mind of Christ and, and, and be happy. Mm. And that's the escape from time and space. Mm. And these relationships, it's so beautiful because most people think it's, it's quite a tragedy when there's, there's a divorce. But in our community... You're going to be interacting with Emily many, many times, probably for many, many years. I'm the ninja it's over like, here. <laughs> right. Now, now you're connected in, a, in another way. It's a, it's a different angle. But, you know, that's one thing Netta Bowen, you know, when she came, I think, last year uh, to some of our, to our mystery schools, she, I remember Kirsten saying, yeah, Netta's really wondering how you guys do relationships because... Usually when it's an ex, it's over, it's done. I don't want anything to see them. I don't want anything to do with them. They're buried. They're in the past. They're gone and everything. And here you are. You're collaborating with with your ex. And, and not just for a couple hours. <laughs> it's like for days, for weeks, for months, for years. If you have any grievances still going on in the mind with your so-called ex, which is <laughs> everything's just the past but whatever's on your screen 
if you've got any grievances, you're going to have to clear your mind. You're going to have to purify your heart. And this is just a speed up. It's an acceleration. So when people say, well, I don't know if you guys take relationships so seriously, we take escape from time and space very, very sincerely. Mm. We take forgiveness to heart. Mm. We take release of all grievances to heart. We aren't messing around. Mm. We're going for purification because that's what Jesus said in the Beatitude. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. We actually want to experience direct union with God, not dilly-dally and tinker around in time and space with concepts and beliefs. So those all have to get undone, and forgiveness is, is the way that, it's, that happens. Mm. Mm. I enjoy, I'll, I'll look forward to watching you and Emily fall deeper and deeper in love, and people may scratch their head and go, no, David doesn't get it. He's, Jason's breaking up, David divorcing Emily, it. and I'm here waiting to watch the unfoldment of a deeper, expansive mm -hmm. love that, that is agape love, mm -hmm. that, that is the same loving mm -hmm. heart attitude mm -hmm. and, and really deep devotional attitude with everyone, mm -hmm. without exception. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm always, uh, that's, that's my joy, is mm -hmm. preceding that. I'm inspired by that too. Yeah, Andy keeps coming my, to my mind for some reason because he, I, the, all that's in my mind is he shared me a miracle the other day because Andy's been working through uh, apathy. He's, he's on the Modern Mystic show for somebody, anyone that doesn't know. And he shared me a powerful realization the other day because he's been getting up earlier, he's been following guidance and prompts. And he's, I asked him to do one thing and he had, he had he, before it happened, he had all this, Resistance coming, I can't do it, I don't want to do it, this is stupid, how is this going to make me happy, da 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 da. And then finally he, he did it and he noticed how he actually just got happier and softer and he was kind of blown away. And then afterwards he had this realization, oh then he got to shakes, some kind of shakes after, even more like an ego backlash, like, like there's so much resistance to following these prompts and then he had this realization that ap apathy was covering over this anger and rage. And the anger and rage, the way he always thought he would deal with it was to go have sex or have another relationship. And now he's totally lost this desire for a, a girlfriend and he just, he might be laughing saying, well, not totally, I don't know. <laughs> but he's lost this desire and he's just wanting to go for what's underneath it, which is the function that you were talking about because it's actually moving him through deeper into this love. So I had this, I just feel like he's going through this similar thing that it's easier to say I hate, meaning I want this, this, and this, instead of I love. And so, yeah, I really wanted to share his miracle because he didn't get to do it on the sh his show. Yeah, yeah. That's an interesting segue, too, to go from like personal feeling of apathy to, to this sense of, of working through a limited perception of love you know, which in the end, all perceptions block the awareness of love. Even forgiveness is, it doesn't give you the full experience of love. It just leads you to what Jesus says, God will take the final step for, you know, the creation, that the I amness that's beyond all perception of the cosmos. But it's, we're getting into that thing of, it, it is our function that leads us toward that happiness. It is our function that in the end, God's will is for perfect happiness, and that's what we're going for. So to know God's will in its fullness and mm. completeness is where the mm. perfect happiness is. And and uh, I think another thing comes in, though, when people say function, they, they automatically fun associate function with the doer. Because right. function and doing in this world are completely associated. And I just was talking with the whole group this morning at the mystery school that that when you allow yourself to be done through in service and devotion to God, which I've been doing for the last 30, 30 some years, that that falls away too. You lose all sense of responsibility. You lose all sense that that you're actually doing anything. You really, it's this very vast, radiant experience. It's very joyful and content, but it doesn't have. A body with it. There's no association with 
what the body's done, what the body is supposed to do, or what the body will do. All that's just part of a defense against love, too. So function, you have to, you know, I think a lot of people, that, the sisters that came to serve for Mother Teresa, you know, they cut their hair and they, they started to practice trying to see the Christ in, in each other and everyone they met, but they got oftentimes so much into the doer. They replaced their busy doing lives with mm. careers and husbands and families with mm. doing for Jesus and doing for Mother Teresa. Mm. And it's still, the ego is so sneaky, it's still associated the function mm. with the body. Mm. And that won't get you there either. Mm. That's why a lot of people burn out on service. You know, I'm going to help out social services mm. and I'm going to volunteer, I'm going to get into volunteerism, and they get in, they're kind of wanting to move in the right direction. But without these deeper teachings and without mm. the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it's so easy to get trapped in mm. this idea of doer and function being synonymous. And really, forgiveness is not a doing. It's Forgiveness is quiet mm. and quietly does nothing. It looks and waits and watches and judges not. Jesus tells us in the in the workbook of A Course in Miracles. So that is not a statement of a doer at all. That's that's just a statement of pure presence, where all thoughts of body, bodies and body thoughts have been completely washed, and the mind has been rinsed. Mm. It's yeah. spectacular. I, I want. I just felt like this gratitude was the theme for the show today, and. You're obviously fired up with gratitude, <laughs> and and I, I feel like an alignment and just a softness, and yet there's still like little tensions that will come or little thoughts. What I will say, and you, you're talking a lot about love, and yeah, how do you go from even this space now into like just still where you're like sometimes when we're on the show. I mean, I got little glimpses when I was talking about Emily, but. How can you speed up this expansion of just like the heart totally? I even like that even more than just being peaceful right now. But yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like that line from uh, Kirsten's Quantum Love song Heartbreaking Wide Open. You know, that I do feel for everyone, it is like a cracking, it's a breaking open. I watch it on the faces of those here at the Mystery School. This is just day two of the whole month, but. I can see the tears pouring out. I can see, see people sharing, like this morning, uh, Eva Britt from Sweden was, was just crying and crying, and then uh, Tarana was sitting right in front of her just crying, and they were both like, it was like waterfalls, but it was this sense of, I've, I've had it too small, it's been too limited, I've been living in a, in a, in a prison of the past, I've just been caught up into the familiar human things and I never really gave myself permission to, to crack wide open. And I think that's the greatest thing. Everyone I talk to, even among the elders in the community, when I join with them, I'm like encouraging them, what do you really feel? What is your heart telling you? What is your passion? What is it that will expand you. That was a conversation from yesterday. What is it that will comes to mind right away when you think of yourself expanding, going beyond comfort mm -hmm. zones of the mm -hmm. world, beyond limitations? And that's what you want. You don't want to plug into some kind of system. You want to be in alignment with the one within mm -hmm. who will allow you to and help you to expand beyond all definitions, mm -hmm. all definitions. Mm -hmm. And that that really is what I really enjoy. That's my spark now, is just joining in that right there. Mm. Not trying to untangle all these logistical, circular problems that aren't really problems at all. It's more like, where is your joy? Like Joseph Campbell, follow your bliss. You know, that was very wise advice. That was coming from the Holy Spirit, to follow your bliss mm. and to really go for it. And to me, that's how it happens. You can't control it. None of my life has felt uh, planned out or controlled. I've just been so spontaneous and let the spirit just drop in. What's next for me? Even this mystery school, you know, we do it once a year, but it started with these devotional retreats over in Europe. That's how the mystery school started. It was me going around and hugging people, loving people, 
sharing these deep teachings all over Europe. And then I looked in my pockets and my suitcase and I went, my gosh, I've got like eight different currencies here. This is, I don't know how I'm going to do with this. And Jesus said, turn them all in, make them all euros. So I said, okay. So I go to the bank <laughs> and turn them all in. I get them all euros. So now I've got a pile of euros from donations from touring around Europe. And I was on this island of Mallorca. And uh, I, the last day I was there, I, I told Lynn, I said, can you show me some of these, these La Casas, uh, these beautiful uh, places of, with white paint and spacious and big? And she did. And she got me in to see uh, one of these places with palm trees and pool and and big, uh, lots of space and bedrooms and everything. And I said, here, I gave her all my euros. And I said, here, put this down as a, as a down payment. I didn't even tell anybody. I, I came back to the United States and I said, guess what? We're doing a, an event in, uh, in Spain. The first one was four weeks. It was the same length as the mystery school. And I had just thrown all my donations into a down payment because Jesus told me to. And then people came from all over and joined me to watch movies. And we had deep discussions and tears and dismantling and all that happened. But I'm just following my prompts. I don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. I didn't plan to go down and rent a place. I didn't have any <laughs> forethought even. I was like, when I was there, Jesus was like, give all your donations over here, down payment and come back. Mm -hmm. um, in so many months, mm -hmm. whatever, seven or eight months later, and then do this uh, mm -hmm. devotional uh, devotional retreat. So that's how the Mystery School started, so to speak. And yeah. it's very similar, actually. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And, you, and you, I'm feeling you just even have to give it away, even if, like, like I invited Emily on the show, but it's somehow it's in just... I don't know, it's deeper than the form playing out because, you know, I'm still happy in this moment. <laughs> like if, you, if it hadn't have come together, you, it was the following that all the joy is really yeah. in. So. Yeah. yeah. It's always that way. It's, it's never dependent on an outcome, but, but it sure feels wonderful to, to share it. It sure feels wonderful to give the invitations of Christ into an actual experience, not some theology or belief system, but to an actual living, mm. vibrant experience and let the twinkling in your eyes be your calling card, you know? It, it's our attitude, it's our state of mind, it's our, our whole demeanor, everything comes from our, our connection with God mm. and that is very powerful. And, and that is something that we don't want to hide. You know, you want to like, proclaim it from the mountaintops. You don't mm. want to hide your light under a bushel. Mm. And most people don't realize that the typical human relationships and the typical human experiences on earth actually involve a lot of hiding your light under the bushel. Mm -hmm. You know, that's been around for over 2,000 years, but they don't realize that their everyday little concept of themselves is actually not who they really are. And they're hiding this best light underneath this uh, little self-concept and you have to let that self-concept be undone to know the fullness of who you really are as a perfect child of God. Mm. Thank you. Well, maybe we could just open it up and see if uh, anybody there has any questions or anything with their hearts bursting and they, they want to share. You can raise your hand literally, or people are probably watching for your virtual hand. And if not, it'll be my shortest show yet. Oh, Kelly, okay. <laughs> no, and she's oh, saying, boy. Oh, she is. Okay. I was like, I am not speaking on this show. I am not going to speak. But, you know, my heart was just like, whoa, well, all right, so I'm just going to speak. But it is, it is so wonderful to see how our minds are one. 
you know, because like I believe we all went through the healing that Jason went through over the past few weeks, all that confusion. And then all of a sudden he pops out to this clarity and he's happy and smiling. And, and you know, you all know that we have a little um, community that meets online, uh, Mighty Companions in Motion. And I just said in our last joining, I'm like, what do we do now? Nobody has any problems, you know? It's like, <laughs> we're just all happy. Like, we're, we've got so much gratitude. There's hearts going everywhere. And I'm like, how do we sit with this, you know? It's almost like dealing with issues and, and breaking down walls is like what I've been doing for the last lifetime of mine. And I'm just like... <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to sit and enjoy. Yeah, joy. Oh, yeah, that's the purpose, getting to that joy. So it's just amazing how our minds, we're all expanding together, whether we're in community mm. or not. I mean, it's like a snowball effect. You know, we start out, and the bigger we get, ooh, we just take all the snow with us. You know, we take all the minds with us. Yeah. And we're just expanding. So, man, David, you know, look what you've done. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. That's what your experience can be. Everyone's experience is just hearts flying everywhere. That's a great digital, with the digital hearts flying. And, yeah, we have a lot of that. And, yeah, it's not meant to be like grinding, grinding, grinding. I know um, Suzanne, I watched a little bit of her program with Dan, and, and uh, it was so beautiful because she kind of had like a hard edge kind of, like really, I'm like really, let's get it over, like, get it done. Like, okay, spiritual awakening, get it done. And, and then, yeah, ex really expressed how she had concepts of just sitting and meditating and, and then didn't really understand there was something to go through, but, but you're right. You and our viewers and many people have been allowing this unconscious stuff up. That's all Jesus said. Don't, don't hide it. Don't push it down. Just let it come up. And the ego was saying something was going wrong with our lives when actually all this allowing the darkness up and letting it come and go, it, it's been going right. It's actually, uh, that's how healing actually goes. So, Thank you for that witness, and thank you for hanging in there through all these years of uh, just, okay, keeping the faith, keeping the faith, keeping the faith. It's beautiful. Okay, we got another. Thanks, Kelly. What's that? Gail. Ga Gail? Hi. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi. I want to thank you both so much. I absolutely love the show. And also... Just what Kelly was saying, the same with me too, with um, love. Love has been the theme, the theme for me the last while, but um, particularly since joining the retreats online, since April, doing each one after another, coming to that awakening online, I have just had to speed up. After decades of trying to get it, suddenly the joy is just there and, and the love is flowing, and I'll have bouts of real darkness coming up flowing through in April and May and June and and now it's like this 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 hallelujah this great burst of this joy and on Saturday yesterday I listened to Jeff's online movie I just love that thank you Jeff for doing those and I got called to go to the market we have a, a market downtown here in the city and I, it's usually too late they're closing up by the time the movie's over but I was really listening to spirit so I got dressed for outdoors, and out I went. And I just totally meandered to spirit. You show me where to go. And I was saying in my heart, I've been saying the last uh, the last week, that I love you. And really, I'm so good at giving it to others, and I love you, and I see the love in them, and I just really see them as the brother and sister. But this really hit home to me, like really in my heart. I am the love. I am the love of self. And that just took a real a real shift in me. So I'm meandering through this market, and I go by a man selling corn, and I keep walking by, and Spirit says, 
get some corn. And I went, oh, I've already passed. Didn't even finish that thought. I turned around, went to the corn man. I call him the corn man. And he stopped talking to the gentleman he was with. The guy left. And it was all me, just me and him. And the love of the moment. And I bought some corn, exchanged the money, and I just needed to hug him. I went up and gave him this such a gentle hug, and we hugged back. And he stood back just about, not even a foot from me, really close to me. And he starts telling me his beautiful miracle. Want to hear how I got this job? Well, I heard from spirit. Spirit told me in my mind, I was going to meet a man, he's going to know a man, I know another man, and I would get this job so important. He said, that's crazy, that's not going to happen. He said, well, it did happen within a very short time, and I have been selling this corn for six years. And you know what, he said, I'm not just selling corn, I get to tell you, God loves you. <laughs> and went, wow, wow, thank you. And then... You know, we're just bursting in each other's eyes and just the love in him and it's so natural. Then he tells me the story of um, how God said to him, you're like my little heart. I'm the big heart of God. You're my little heart here and you're going to shine my big heart of God through you to everyone that comes to you. You think you're selling corn? You're telling everyone God loves you. And I just looked at him and I said, I know God loves us. And that's just what I've been saying. God loves you. <laughs> and this other man had come up to buy corn, and he was like, <sighs> listening to all this, and I, and I said, yeah, God loves us. And the way we went, and it was just, you know, both David and Jason, all that you've shared and all that you, you tell, and even the whole show today, everybody's so raw and so open. And I just feel that's just like who I am. I'm just so loving after these decades of it's just so simple. So simple after finally getting through the resistance of, of not getting it mm. and the love. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. This love is just so beautiful. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, that's beautiful. That's you. Yeah, I see it. I see the signs and symbols every day. <laughs> Today I was, I was on the internet and, and I saw this headline, Paul McCartney saw God. Yeah, I was just like, I love it. I love it when one of my Beatles uh, sees God. You know, I mean, and this is like headlines. I'm like on the internet, and then I saw it in several different places. And I'm like, okay, it's a great experience. But those, it's just those experiences we have where, where we start to feel happy. And there's actually a woman here at the mystery school. She came like maybe seven weeks ago here. She's been here all summer. And she was pre prepping for Strawberry and the Voice Liberation, and now she's part of the Mystery School. And she's just, she's just glowing so much. And she went to speak today, and she had her name tag on, but she looked down at the name tag Willow, and she said, I, I don't even know what that means anymore. It's been so expansive that she's so loosened from a, a personal sense of identity just from being here coming here maybe in June, and now here she is in the beginning of September, where she's she's let go, she's kind of let go of her Course of Miracles group, she let go of her partner, she let go of her job, she's just doing all those things that the mystics and saints have talked about, you know, usually it takes years and years for them, but nowadays with Course of Miracles, people are up, 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 and now she's just kind of she was just saying, I have so much love. It's, I can't hardly speak of it, but I just, it's like it's just radiating out of me. And I just, it's, I, I can't contain it. She just kept telling Kirsten. Mm. And she's springing into kind of mystical experiences where she, her body uh, can't do a whole lot, can't seem to function because she just gives her mind or heart over to this expansive radiating love that's coming in. And so these are all great examples. I see these witnesses around me mm. every day. And uh, a lot of times they say things like, thank you, David. And, mm. and I just, all glory to God. All I did was listen and follow. It's really mm. that simple. It's not, there's nothing personal to it. It's mm. just listening and following. That's all we mm. have to do. It's so simple. It's not a big 
formula or a complicated thing or got to go through all kinds of hoops and gyrations. Yeah, it's just hearts, hearts, hearts because because I simply listened and followed, and now I, I behold the witnesses to that. You know, to listening and following, and it's fun. It's really a lot of a lot of joy. So thank you, Gail. Every time I see you, you're always arms and hearts, and you're just you've got a lot of exploding love that's coming coming through. As do a lot of you. I just love watching the faces on the these uh, online shows and broadcasts because that that warms my heart to see. You. Instead of Hollywood squares, it's like all these squares all over and all these happy happy people with arms going up and hearts and all these kind of things. And to me, that's that's what we're here for. That's what it's, it's all been worth it. Yeah. Okay, AC, you have something as well? Thanks, Gail. Yes, yes this has been quite an undoing of, uh, it seems like a lifetime of estranged relationships and being quiet, trying to figure it out, trying to figure out how to do it right, and lots of doing. So lately, uh, with with working with the daughter that I was, well, with the relationship within my mind between the daughter and me, uh, that undoing is happening so that when the phone rings, I'm not shaking, I'm not upset and I can see everything was a lesson for me and I'm doing this concept of mother and all the opinions and judgments and assumptions and everything that I've had that I didn't know I had really until I've been working with this and so now through feeling the, the guilt of believing all of these ideas of self concepts I had of being a bad mother and uh, doing it wrong and saying something that could mm. cause a disaster in her life feeling that like I could upset somebody it's it's coming around till I can see the innocence and that's that's it that's and I feel so so much gratitude and and uh, I know that this relationship is healed. It's just coming to the awareness of that. And that, that we're all innocent. That's all there is, is innocence and love. That's all that's real. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, AC. Uh, well, maybe I could bring up my last thing just so I use my show well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just, I can feel, I just, I'm just grateful the way the show just is going and this, is, yeah, it feels perfect, but I can feel this little tingling coming up like it's not complete because Emily's not able to hear it and be it and it wasn't supported really by the universe. And I briefly mentioned that to you earlier and you said, well, I'll just be open to the timing, but, but right now, I'd, so how do I, yeah, how do I like not get closed up after? By. Yeah, yeah. Well, she she is so full in function. I invited her. Can we go check the door one more time. Here? <laughs> <laughs> Live TV at its best. No. She, she's so full in function. She's she's stronger than any woman that you've ever known. She's because <laughs> as, she, as she goes into uh, function, as you go into function, you become stronger than Wonder Woman. I think uh, uh, Wonder Woman would have some lessons to learn um, from this because Wonder Woman fights her way out of situations, and and Emily is so in such a yielding into being used by the Spirit in such a full, full way. And uh, so the time when you called today, she was right there in the room, but there was a whole room full of people, and, and she was very much in the next session of extending everything. She's like a conduit for Spirit. And she's 
you could say growing extremely strong in in function. That is what happiness is. It's, there isn't a horizontal component to happiness. It's all vertical alignment. And so, yeah, that's, in one sense, she's she's here with you offering the greatest gift in the sense that she's serving in the most full way that she knows how in the moment. And that's what you would wish for her, and that's what she would wish for you, and that's what all of us wish for each other, mm -hmm. you know, is, is for us to be so given over to spirit, mm -hmm. so used by spirit, so much in alignment with spirit, that our strength and our happiness mm -hmm. just becomes what we are. We radiate that. So that's, that's always the answer, is, uh, as we know. Because I... Is, I see this thought coming up, like, well, I better hear no complaining that I just talk about the difficult times with this relationship. And it's like, and if I hear it, I'm just, maybe this is just freeing me from responsibility that I have to do or yes. anything or something. No, there's, it's not a matter of, uh, of, of something in form coming out a certain way. You know, it's the... It's the beauty of being in your joy and in your function and, and, and feeling that love and that connection. And, you know, that, it, it always comes around. There's always, I've noticed there's always opportunities uh, for extension. It's my lesson not to judge the form of things. It's to, to be there showing up in purpose and letting go of all expectations of form. That's, that's how you stay happy. And that's how you stay in the love. Thank you, David. <laughs> okay, well, that's a perfect ending to another surprise episode of From the Bottom Up. <laughs> so I'll just... Oh, yeah, I'd like to wave to everybody. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. She's got the Beatles shirt on, yeah. Who has the Beatles shirt? Gail. Oh, Gail has the Beatles shirt on. Let it be. <laughs> Let it be the Beatles. There's Paul. <laughs> then oh, Lou. Oh. Living Miracles, Utah. Astrid. Richard and Susie. La <laughs> Casa. Heidi. Mary, Vera, Julie. Oh, thank you, everyone. It feels so good to just be with you here and see you and just we have a very transparent show. So I'm heading back up to the mystery school after this at some point. And oh, there's John. John was there last year. <laughs> okay, thanks for all the support from Ellen Virtual Mexico and the whole team here. And See you uh, at the online retreat next weekend. Thanks, David. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.